Today I'm going to show you quite a few things that I do on a regular basis um, with specific examples. So this morning I got up and I created a blog post. Let me just show it to you here. We're going to talk about this blog post, why I created it, how I knew to create it. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the elements inside the blog post because I think it's really important that you understand the concept of why certain things are done the way they're done, and why they're created this way. So the blog topic that I created today is actually on my Las Vegas real estate website and it's the one day bus tours from Las Vegas to Grand Canyon. So let me tell you why I created this. First thing is I use the strategy I often use, which is by going over to my favorite keyword tool and typing in a keyword. Now in my case, I was looking to do a hyper local blog post. So this would be a blog post specific to Las Vegas or even a smaller pocket inside of Las Vegas, even a, a more hyper local like a zip code or neighborhood. But in this particular case, I found something I wanted to do in Las Vegas. So what I do is I pull all the keywords in Las Vegas and then I say show me all word counts that have at least three or more words and have a search volume of under 300. Now, whenever I want to rank fast on the search engines for um, any kind of content, I start by looking at keywords that have a 250, 300 monthly search volume. I can also pull by competition level, but what happens that I find is most of my blog posts that I do following my formula um, that is not really unique to me as much as it is a search engine optimization um, strategy that a lot of people use. When I'm creating my co content, right, and I write a blog post that's under 250 or 300 monthly search volume, uh, typically I'll rank very quickly for that. So if I'm looking to get a bunch of little new things um, started or I want a little bit more uh, traffic maybe I'm creating a new blog I want to start with I'll start here and then once I've done those I work my way up okay I want to show you there is on my website called the seventh stream.com yesterday I shared a blog from Jim and Ricky over at um, income school and I like their their I like their teachings because they fun, they work very very similar to I do how I do they build niche word niche websites on WordPress they blog like crazy they optimize with ads and with affiliate links and um, and then do training and sell courses so I'm very similar I work very similar to them and they call their blogging they they talk about a content mix. So they say that one third, when they build it, when they're building a new website, one third of their articles are response posts. These answer a specific question and are around twelve to thirteen hundred words long. I, you know what? I will put a link to this page um, in the description below, so you guys can take a look at this afterwards. So one third of the articles are response posts to answer a specific question, like. How long would it take to get from Las Vegas to Grand Canyon? They're around 1,200 to 1,300 words long, low competition queries, and they write these first. The second ones are staple posts. They're around 2,200 words long and are more in-depth than a quick answer. They're often lists, articles, deep dive. So I'm going to, right now, I'm at about 1,000 words for my blog post. So I would be somewhere in between these two but I'm still building on to it. So it's going to be longer. So it's probably going to be more like this middle one here, a staple post. And then pillar posts. Um, you've also heard these referred to as like skyscrapers. Uh, this, these are going to be one third. These are the big, meaty, competitive topics, several thousand words. Okay. So they kind of do one third, one third, one third. I don't think mine has ever been that definitive where I, where I've calculated how many are staple posts, how many are, your pillar posts, how many response posts. What I tend to do though is I do start off with this with the smaller work my way up and then go to the bigger one. So it's a very similar formula. 
And using uh, my keyword tool, SEMrush, I'm able to identify some of these opportunities at a quicker glance than using some of the free ones in Google. So this is a paid tool that I use, okay? So I was scrolling down here looking at, okay, where can I donate my car? How to be a teacher in Las Vegas? I really like that one. I'm gonna come back and do that one. And I came across, um, as I was scrolling, one day trips to Grand Canyon. So that's how I picked it. Now, this is a local website, so the benefit is that one, uh, it's a real estate website. I'm showing everybody that I am a local expert here in Las Vegas. So it's hyper local. It still benefits my real estate website. And I like to have a lot of local info on my website. I also have ads, sponsored ads on my website. And so I do make money based on the amount of traffic and my hyper local um, items generate a lot more traffic than just a standard real estate neighborhood page. So I like to have a lot of those in there because they do generate income income for the website as well now in addition what you can see here is i did my intro i i've grabbed a video this is not my video and in my trainings i show you how to use the shared option in youtube to correctly share a video that you have you will see that you have permission to share um, just by how they uploaded the video you don't have to ask them directly it's based on how they uploaded the video so they still get the credit they still get the play um, they still get the views, but it's on my website, which adds value to my user. All right, then I've got a call to action. I've got a disclosure that I benefit from my affiliate links. I've got a table of contents. And then here you can see I've got one day Grand Canyon from Las Vegas Tours. Okay. Now, for my affiliate marketers, those of you that are following me because you're specifically learning affiliate marketing, this is where the gold starts coming in. So what I did is every one of these that I went on and listed as a Grand, as a Grand Canyon tour, I looked to see if they had an affiliate um, opportunity. If they did, I applied for it. So I don't have them all today, but I went and applied for them. My goal is to make a list of all the one day Grand Canyon tours and then only link to the ones I have an affiliate link to and then just put the name in um, otherwise, and the people, of course, could go Google could go Google it. Now, I do have an affiliate link, um, an affiliate relationship with Groupon, so this is really cool. What it, Once you sign up with Groupon and you get your affiliate, excuse my voice, I'm, I'm a little hoarse today, um, you can go over to Groupon, you can go to any page, so you can see here right now I'm working on the hotels at the Grand Canyon. So I, I typed in um, hotels at Grand Canyon, I found this page. What I'm able to do then, is just up here they give you a little uh, bookmark bookmarklet or bookmark and you can just now click on that and it gives you the ability now to create a link that will have an affiliate code in there which means if anybody signs up for the grand hotel using groupon they pay for the groupon i'll get an affiliate um, commission and so this blog serves several purposes for me. One, it feeds my real estate website, shows I'm a local expert. Two, it generates more traffic because it's going to rank on the search engines, which will bring me more AdSense revenue. Three, I'm building an affiliate links for the companies, hotels, travel that are directly related to that. So that's also a benefit. Um, this Ebates one up here, I'm also an affiliate. So I've got Ebates back there. And a lot of these these people can get a Groupon and they can get Ebates, cash back, really great deals if they know about it. But a lot of people don't know about it. So you're doing them a favor. All right. Then I've got a little quote there from um, so another website that has information about the Grand Canyon. Of course, I've given them a link back there. Now I've included an image and this image is created directly for the purpose of pinning it on Pinterest. So I like when I blog now to create a long, um, narrow, pin-shaped image that is geared for Pinterest, because now watch what I can do. I'll click on my little bookmark here, or I'll go up here to Pinterest. See the difference? So this is what the video looks like. This is what a regular square um, vertical image would look, look like, and this is my long pin. And then I click Save, and now I'm able to pin that to the website that I want to pin it on, and other people are willing to pin it as well. Underneath that, I have Grand Canyon Guides and Maps. Now, these are Amazon affiliate 
links and all I did and you can go back to my other video on this all I did is go to my Amazon affiliate account create new search ad or custom ad I typed in the word Grand Canyon and I pulled up the code and I added it to the blog post okay also fantastic for affiliate marketing next <clears throat> excuse me boy I'm hoarse next I created a frequently asked questions section so when is the best time to visit the Grand Canyon? Is there a fee to visit the Grand Canyon? What are the best views of Grand Canyon? And now you can see here, I've started my list of, of views. These are the ones at the South Rim. These are at the North Rim. But I'm now seeing an opportunity because while I put everything on a quick list of frequently asked questions using uh, WordPress Gutenberg content blocks, the little frequently asked questions block, I can expand on a bunch of these. So if I really want to make this post stand out, I'm going to get it up to probably a couple thousand words. There are ways I can expand on this. And one of those would be describing these views. Where are they? Maybe directions, how long it takes to get there, anything like that. Okay. And then I've got, is there Wi-Fi at Grand Canyon? That's just a quick answer. I'm not going to elaborate on that. What should I wear to Grand Canyon? Now, if you look here, I've got things like wear breathable light colored clothes, long tan or khaki breathable shorts. Here's an idea for the men who like pockets. Now, if they click on that, it goes to Amazon and they've got here, we've got a pair of shorts that are perfect for hiking in uh, Arizona or Vegas um, with pockets. And with Amazon, if this person now puts this item in their cart, and then they add any other items to their cart, whether they use my link or not. So let's just say this guy puts these shorts in his cart and then he continues to go on and search for bug spray, suntan lotion, backpacks, water bottles, whatever he happens to do, or maybe something unrelated. He happens to notice he needs protein powder that he's going to have shipped. I will get a commission on the entire cart. Okay. That's because of the 30 day cookie that Amazon, I mean the 24 hour cookie that Amazon gives us. Now, if that person puts all these items in their cart and they do not check out, then a 30 day extension is put onto that cart that if they check out any time between now and the next, now and 30 days without removing all these items, I would still get a commission. Now, any new items they add to the cart, we don't get at that point. But if, if he happens to wait and say, you know, I'm just not sure today. I'm going to leave this in there. And he doesn't empty the cart. And then eventually at some point he checks out with some of these items in it. We still get a commission. So you can see I'm covering a lot of bases with this blog post. And in my experience, these um, hyperlinks here do those generate the most Amazon sales for me more than these widgets generally do. Even though these look great, these, these seem to generate more interest when they click through. So I've got several items there. And now I've got where can I get mapped to the Grand Canyon? And these are actually all linking to the Grand Canyon um, Authority or, or local parks and rec sites. And they can download each one of those and it opens in a new tab. And now I've started adding all of the hotels. So hotels near the South Rim. Um, the city nearby. Now I can also expand on each one of these. And today I've begun to look at which one of those might have affiliate relationships. So if I've got an affiliate relationship with booking.com or hotels.com or Expedia or Travelocity or any of those, I can now go in and format that link, come in here and hyperlink, and then I will have the ability to earn affiliate commissions on those. If there's a Groupon, I can link to the Groupon. The drawback with the, the Groupon is that um, they're going to expire. They might expire. So your links are going to go bad. You're going to have to go check those. Or if you've got a, a hard, fast affiliate relationship through commission, you know, from CJ.com, Commission Junction, or ShareSale, or Flex Offers, or any of those, you're more likely to have something that's going to last longer. Booking.com, you can apply directly with them. So I've started doing all of that. So right now, this is a this is this is about a thousand words, and I could stop here, but I probably won't. I've got more things I can do to elaborate on this, and I, I think this could generate some decent traffic. 
Now, also, one thing I want to show you is if I go to my SEM Rush and I go down here to SEO content template, this is something I'm always going to do um, in the beginning or before I complete my blog post. So enter your target keywords is going to be um, Day Tour Grand Canyon from Las Vegas. Let's start there. I'm going to click create SEO template. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go pull the top 10 competitors on Google and it's going to measure my piece of content against theirs. Well, actually it's going to measure all of theirs and then it's going to suggest to me what my average, um, what the average text length is for those blog posts, how long they are and some other items. So let's look at this. So I've got 10 and I can go in and click on those and view them. Okay. Now here, look down here, text length, recommended text length, 1,269 words. So I'm going to create a blog post that's got 1,300 words just to be in line with those other guys. So if I want to beat them, I probably have to dive even deeper. Now, I may not still beat them because if they are an authority on the Grand Canyon and I'm not, their shorter blog might still considerably outrank mine because Google believes they are the authority on the topic, where my website's all about Las Vegas, so they may not consider that as relative. So just because you create a better, longer blog post, more in depth with great video and charts and everything else, doesn't necessarily mean you'll outrank the other guys, because they may just have enough, tr enough uh, trust and authority that they're still gonna outrank you, but it's worth the effort to go all in and rank as high as you possibly can, okay? Um, Jim and Ricky over at, um, at Income Schools have done a study. I've never tested this, actually. They've done a study, and they, their reports show that it takes about 35 weeks for a blog post to reach where it's, where it's probably going to nestle on Google. And that's an interesting um, kind of little scenario there. And it kind of tells you that, look, you got to create a lot of content and you got to be patient and wait for it to rise up the ranks. So you're going to be looking at six, seven, eight months of watching it climb, build it right on the, on the onset. And it'll be a gift that keeps on giving later. It'll be a passive income earner later. Okay, I also love this, semantically related key words. Now, I'm always going to look at this before I finish my blog post because it is saying that it believes these keywords should be on my blog post somewhere because they are re semantically related to the Grand Canyon and people that have written about day tour to the Grand Canyon have used words like this, so I need to go make sure I have it. So, for example, a helicopter tour, tour, I absolutely have it. Boulder City, I don't. So there's probably something re referencing um, the proximity of Boulder City to um, Grand Canyon. So I need to go look at that. Rim of the Grand Canyon. Tour to the Grand Kim Canyon South Rim. Bright Angel Lodge. So that's where you know you go, oh, I didn't put in any hotels. That's a great idea. Let me go look at those. The Canyon Floor. I have nothing about the Canyon Floor. So what I'll do now is I'll go Google Canyon Floor because I don't know Grand Canyon. I've been there once years and years ago. I want to go again, but I don't know it. So I've got to go do all this Google research myself. So I need to go look at why this is important. Maybe they're talking about the dimensions of, to the canyon floor. I don't know. I have to go look. Visiting Mather Point. I got that one. That's an area. So these are areas inside there. So I'm going to go check my blog and make sure that I have covered all of these topics, keywords as well. And then it suggests backlinks. So these are our other comp our other websites that have linked to some of these guys that I might pitch to get a backlink in some sort of a of a way. And then we can scroll down and see um, how our competitors are using the target keyword. Okay. Now page title it tells you not to use the keyword phrase more than once. The optimal title length is fifty five. Um, it's saying put date tour Grand Canyon in the title because that's a keyword that I'm targeting and that still has some relevance in SEO in, in um, now, although a lot of the old fashioned SEO and keyword stuffing and, and all of that doesn't apply anymore. There's still some strategy to putting your target keyword in the intro, the URL, the title, um, things like that. 
It's telling me to, to make sure that it's at least an H, has an H1 tag. That's the title. I already do that. All right. So this is cool. It'll, it'll also often tell us things like the other people have used video. So we suggest you use video or images. Um, so this is a great tool. Just to, um, I always look over this one before I make the post just to make sure I've covered all, everything that I need to cover. So if you're if you're drawing a blank and you don't know what else to write, this tool is going to help guide you on on other areas you may not have thought about based on what everybody else is doing. Now I've got a really good shot of ranking on page one, potentially at the top of page one um, for a blog post like this. I did one like this and it was on how to keep bugs off your screen doors. Now, Vegas, we don't have this problem. Um, we have bugs, but we don't have a lot of flying bugs. We don't have issues with mosquitoes and things like that, unless you're right on the one of the man-made lakes. And we, we don't see a lot of screen doors. It's also too hot in the summer to keep your door open and cold in the winter, so we don't we don't see a lot of that. But I went ahead and did the blog post because I saw it on one of on one of the keyword research things I was doing. And it shot right up there nationally, and I was really surprised. And now I sell, you know, those citronella candles and the and things that you spray the screen with, and from that blog post through my affiliate link. So you just you just don't know. And when it comes to blogging, some of these are going to take off and do great. Some of them will go flat and die. You just have to be okay with that. You know, um, what we really want to focus on is making sure that you get like thirty to fifty of these. Um, pages on your website, really good uh, meaty blog posts. And then you've got a website that could be generating some traffic and um, bringing you some, some sales, affiliate income, whatever it is that you're going after. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you that today so that you could see exactly how and why I created this um, hyper local blog post. Thank you for, um, for giving my voice here. I wanted to make sure I still got this video lesson up, up up for you today. All right. Thanks for joining me.